Sometimes, large and unusual objects are transported, like nuclear bombs, massive rockets, and large statues. Transporting unusual cargo like this requires large-scale coordination and planning. Today, we're going to be taking a look at 15 of the most dangerous transport operations of all time. Let's begin. Number 15. Nuclear Bomb Transport as you might expect, transporting a nuclear bomb is no easy task. After all, one wrong bump can lead to an absolute catastrophe. So, in order to keep these weapons of mass destruction safe, the U.S. Army takes some very stringent measures. Administered by the Office of Secure Transportation, these classified shipments they handle periodically contain nuclear weapons or components, enriched uranium or plutonium. And so, in order to keep these compounds stable, cargo is transported in highly modified secure tractor trailers and escorted by armed federal agents who ride alongside in other vehicles. These agents can not only respond to dangers with the cargo, but can also make sure that the weapons aren't stolen and put into the wrong hands. And given how important this cargo is, this is certainly for the best. Number 14. The Aso Minami Route While traveling by train is generally a safe way to get from point A to point B, the railroad that operates along the so-called Aso Minami Route is far from safe. Traveling between Tateno Station and Takamori Station, passengers usually ride the route without incident. However, during times of seismic activity, it can become really dangerous really quickly. This is because the Asominami route is located both directly underneath a fault line and right beside an active volcano. And in the past, both hot lava and seismic activity have threatened or damaged the railway tracks. As such, I'd suggest avoiding this route when at all possible. Number 13. The Statue of Liberty The Statue of Liberty is easily one of the United States' most recognizable landmarks, yet what many don't realize is that it was actually made overseas. Given to the United States by France in 1885 as a symbol of friendship between the two countries and their alliance during the American Revolution, the fact that it was made in France made shipping the statue a pretty colossal task, and due to the risks of damaging it, it was done via a very arduous process. First, the statue had to be disassembled into more than 360 pieces, and from there it was then packed into 214 wooden crates and transported across the Atlantic in a cargo ship. Once the statue arrived on June 17, 1885, reconstruction began immediately, starting from the pedestal and going upwards. After a year had passed, the assembly was finally completed, and ever since, the Statue of Liberty has been an immortal piece of Americana. Number 12. Pirates of the Caribbean while the Pirates of the Caribbean may be a work of fiction, it turns out that there was a time when transporting goods through the Caribbean was an extremely dangerous thing. That's because during a time period known as the Golden Age of Piracy, between the 1650s and 1730s, pirates scoured the Caribbean, and in many cases they were able to deal serious blows to colonial officials. Now, pirates generally consisted of crews of young men and ex-Navy seamen, all of whom hoped to make a quick buck attacking the gold-laden ships that were being transported between the Caribbean and Europe. While there were various classes of pirate, with some being government employees and others being rogue thieves, all were in the business of attacking enemy cargo, and in the case of larger pirate fleets, attacking fortified towns and cities. And while these pirates were very effective, they ultimately began to decline after the navies of colonial powers began to grow. And by the 1830s, they had all but disappeared, making what had once been a very dangerous transport operation a relatively safe one. Number 11. Nuclear Waste Transport Okay, it goes without saying that nuclear waste is incredibly dangerous, and so it follows that bringing it from place to place can be even more dangerous. After all, just one small slip-up could severely contaminate wherever the waste touches, and thus it takes a special type of container to transport it safely. Known as casks, these containers are heavily shielded and made of high-strength steel, and in order to ensure that they're up for the task, they're tested thoroughly before use. This means that they have to prove that they can withstand earthquakes, flooding, and tornadoes to ensure they never become compromised, making these containers top of the line. If that wasn't enough, some are reportedly so strong that they could be dropped from a height of 9 meters onto a hard surface that had an 800-degree fire and still remain intact, making them even more true technological marvels. However, when you further consider that they need to last for decades, if not centuries, in order to not pose a threat to humans, it becomes clear that this is definitely for the best. Number 10. Syrian Smuggling 
The Syrian civil war was one of the most destructive conflicts of the 2010s, and it was thanks to both this event and a series of other political upheavals in North Africa that Europe had a massive refugee crisis. Happening from about 2011 to 2017, the war saw millions of people flee from their homes, and since most of Syria's neighbors would not let Syrians cross past their borders, many of them opted to travel to Europe as refugees. However, because they could not obtain visas, it was nearly impossible for them to flee via normal channels, and instead, Syrians were often forced to migrate to Europe with the help of human smugglers. Generally speaking, these smugglers would charge over $1,000 per ticket to sail across the Mediterranean from Syria or North Africa to countries such as Greece and Italy. However, rather than send them in safe, seaworthy vessels, they were generally brought by a beat-up and overcrowded rafts that had no life jackets and little in the way of safety gear. As a result, many of these boats ended up becoming shipwrecked, and thousands drowned en route to their destinations. Number 9. Illegal Narcotics The narcotics trade is a $400 billion per year industry. However, since these drugs are illegal, criminal organizations have to be clever when transporting them. And generally speaking, they will use drug traffickers, who are also known as drug mules, to get the job done. In essence, these are people who will travel across international borders in order to smuggle drugs. And in order to avoid detection, they will often engage in extremely dangerous practices. For example, drug mules will sometimes swallow tiny balloons filled with small quantities of a drug, often made out of condoms, latex gloves, or hollowed capsules. These capsules are later recovered out of the person's feces, and if they happen to break or pop before making it out the other end, they can easily kill the mule. Others instead opt to hide these capsules in body cavities such as their private parts or mouth, which can not only be painful, but also could be catastrophic if any of those capsules break or tear. When you further consider that penalties for smuggling drugs can sometimes be extremely severe, we think it becomes clear that narcotics transport is extremely dangerous. Number 8. NASA Crawler Transporter Whenever NASA makes a large spaceship or rocket, they face the daunting task of not just launching it, but physically moving the monstrous vehicle to the launch site. If the rocket were to tip over, hundreds of millions of dollars and millions of man-hours would go to waste in an instant. So in order to ensure this doesn't happen, NASA relies on its two crawler transporters. Completed in 1965 at a cost of about $14 million each, the two crawlers, which are nicknamed Hans and Franz, measure in at 39 meters in length, 34 meters in width, and over 6 meters in height. And at the time of construction, they were the largest self-powered land vehicles in the world. They're primarily used to transport space shuttles from 1981 to 2011. In order to operate, they require the use of 30 engineers, technicians, and drivers so they can reach the launch site, making it a mission in and of itself to use them. However, when you consider that they're practically the only vehicles out there that are able to transport spaceships, it becomes clear they're worth using despite all the effort. Number 7. War Pigeons of all the animals to serve during the World Wars, few were quite as useful as war pigeons. Coming from a certain breed known as the Racing Homer, these pigeons would use their speed, homing abilities, and ability to fly at high altitudes to deliver messages through the enemy lines, allowing soldiers, spies, and other military personnel to communicate in an age before the widespread use of Enigma machines and encrypted messages. Now, these pigeons were trained to always fly back to a certain spot, as it was only at this spot that they were fed. Therefore, soldiers on the field would simply take the pigeons with them, and if they had a message to send, would attach it to their legs and have them fly off. Generally speaking, two would be sent off at any one time, due to the fact that they were often shot down by enemy soldiers. Yet despite this, they proved to be so successful that they were used throughout both world wars. And while passenger pigeons are used far less today than they were in the past, there are a handful of military units that continue to use them, which in my opinion is a testament to their utility. Number 6. The Silk Road The Silk Road is easily one of the world's most romanticized shipping routes, yet it turns out that running a shipping operation through it was extremely dangerous. Seeing active use between the 2nd century BC and the mid-15th century, this 6,400-kilometer path connected Europe with the Middle East, North Africa, and Asia, and was generally used by traders trying to trade for goods that could not be found in their home countries. 
Now, while technically consisting of various routes with various different terrains, the Silk Road was a generally dangerous place to travel, as traders not only had to deal with changing biomes such as hot deserts, sloping valleys, and lush forests, but also had to contend with bands of thieves that would target vulnerable traders coming through. However, despite all the dangers, the Silk Road was still very well traveled, and as a result, various rest stations and travelers' facilities existed along the path. These were crucial because they not only facilitated the exchange of goods, but also the exchange of ideas and technologies. And it was because of this that things like silk and gunpowder were introduced to Europe. Yet, despite its importance, the route was abruptly shut down by the Ottomans after they took Constantinople in 1453, marking the end of one of history's most important transport routes. Number 5. The Battle of the Atlantic while technically not a bona fide battle, the Battle of the Atlantic was a set of circumstances that made transport operations between North America and Europe extremely dangerous for much of World War II. In essence, the Battle of the Atlantic was the continuous engagement between German U-boats, warships, and bombers, and Allied cargo shipping as part of Germany's attempts of a blockade between North America and Britain. And by some accounts, it's considered to be the largest and most complex battle in world history. Involving thousands of ships and submarines, there were likely about a thousand armed encounters during this time period. And given the fact that the battle theater covered millions of square kilometers of open ocean, the entire thing was a logistical nightmare to plan and strategize. While the tides of these long battles often swung in one way or another, the fact that the Allies were able to effectively defend against German surface raiders by the end of 1942 and U-boats by mid-1943 was a deadly blow to the Axis powers, and by the end of 1943 the German blockade had all but failed. Despite this, the Battle of the Atlantic still claimed about 3,500 Allied merchant vessels and 175 warships. And so, despite the eventual victory, it goes without saying that the defense of the Allied transport operation was extremely difficult. Number 4. The East India Company While there are plenty of modern corporations out there that are absolutely massive, the British East India Company was easily one of the most powerful global monopolies in world history. Considered to be even wealthier and more expensive than the $7.8 trillion Dutch East India Company, it began as a private corporation in 1600, but over the years expanded into a massive beacon of British power. You see, under the terms of the deal, the London merchants who were granted the charter were given exclusive overseas trading rights with the East Indies, and while this was a relatively minor deal at first, it soon became very important. That's because over time, the company began to amass its own army, having a total of 260,000 soldiers at its peak, which for reference was about twice the size of the British army. This is because the East India Company made the risky gamble of taking over places they traded with, eventually controlling large parts of the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, and Hong Kong. While all of this warmongering made the operation a dangerous affair, after all the mortality rate was an astounding 30%, those who managed to survive were often able to make handsome incomes. Yet by the 1850s, the East India Company began to experience some serious troubles surrounding maintaining healthy finances and fending off local insurrections, and by 1874, the entire company had been dissolved and absorbed into the British crown. Number 3. A Five-Ton Elephant Unsurprisingly, an elephant is not something that's often in need of transportation. However, from time to time, zoos will buy or sell these animals, leading to transport operations being necessary. However, given the fact that these are living, breathing creatures that could easily perish if the conditions aren't right, it takes a specialist to safely transport them. And that's where specialized companies come into play. One of these companies goes by the name of Stephen Fritz Enterprises and gets the job done using temperature-controlled crates. Now, after dropping one of these crates off at the zoo, the zookeeper then begins to train the elephant, being moved to walk into it without fear. More specifically, each and every day, the zookeeper will train the elephant to walk in at the same time, with this time being done at the same time of day that the elephant will ultimately be moved. Once the animal is comfortable with the crate, the elephant is then loaded inside and the crate team is mobilized. It's at this point that it's closed, secured, and lifted using a forklift to place it on the truck. During this time, the forklift only lifts the crate in small 5 centimeter increments, with this being done in order to ensure that the elephant doesn't panic. With a mild sedative always being on hand if necessary, once the transport actually begins, the team stops every 2-3 to three hours to check the elephant's vitals and allow it to relax if nervous and give it snacks. 
This process is repeated on a continuous basis until the elephant arrives at its destination. Number two, the Gulf of Aden. As anyone who's watched Captain Phillips knows, the Gulf of Aden is far from a safe place. After all, it's the perfect storm of geography and catastrophe. And while it's located very close to the extremely busy Suez Canal, it also happens to consist of the coastlines of Djibouti, Somalia, and Yemen, the latter two having been the site of some serious political instability over the last few years. It's because of all this that pirate economies have developed, and the end results have been nothing short of disastrous. Generally speaking, pirates will attack large cargo ships and oil tankers with few defenses. And once they do so, they'll either hold the crew for ransom or take the ships back to Somalia so their parts can be sold. While these types of attacks may seem kind of crazy, the reality is that the area has become a hotbed for pirates ever since the collapse of the Somalian government in 1991. This is because once this happened, foreign fishing boats and dumping trawlers came in and began to overfish and pollute the Gulf of Aden, which effectively put Somalia's fishermen out of business. They then began to team up with ex-soldiers to protect their resources, and this eventually evolved into full-out raids against foreign ships. Eventually, their operation became so complex that a system of funding was set up where local investors on the mainland would invest in raids, which were carried out by pirates equipped with small and speedy boats and armed with AK-47s. As a result, they made transporting goods through the Gulf a living hell between the mid-90s and mid-2010s. But after the U.S. Navy began to step up operations in the area around 2015, the amount of pirate attacks began to decline significantly. As a result, piracy is now a relatively minor risk in the region, although if the U.S. ever decides to leave the area, attacks could easily ramp up once more. Number 1. The Pony Express while we all can use airmail, texts, or email to send messages to our friends and family, there was once a time where people would rely on the Pony Express. Operating from April of 1860 to October of 1861, it failed soon after it began due to financial difficulties. But during its time, it was easily one of the fastest, yet most dangerous transport operations around. Running between the states of Missouri and California, it relied on a network of horse riders to bring mail satchels across the country. Given that it took the service just 10 days to transport mail, it was truly revolutionary, as at this time, the only other alternatives were a 25-day stagecoach delivery service or a months-long ship's delivery service. Now, in order to ensure that the Pony Express worked efficiently, a string of nearly 200 relief stations was set up across what is now Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, and California with each being staffed by lone horsemen who would ride between stations at a breakneck pace, switching mounts every 15 to 20 kilometers, and then handing their cargo off to a new courier after 100 to 160 kilometers. In order to qualify as a rider, you had to be between 100 and 125 pounds and single, and due to these requirements, the average age of the riders was just 20 years old, with some being as young as 11 years old. Despite their young age, the dangers of working for the Pony Express were pretty crazy as riders had to deal with extreme weather conditions, harsh terrain, and the threat of attacks by bandits and Native Americans. Some would argue that things were often even worse for the stock keepers who manned the relief stations, as they were not only forced to live in crude dirt floor hovels, they also had to contend with the Native American raids, as their stations were often attacked due to hostile relations between the tribes and the federal government. As a result, a total of 16 stockhands and six riders were killed during the 18 months that the Pony Express was in operation. And as such, it was probably for the best that competition from telegraph services and the lack of federal funding forced the company to shut down. Watch our binge watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.